Hi, welcome to another session of me sharing my research experiences with you. Today, the talk is about how to defend your research proposal. So, there are some very important tips. I will share with you three. First, prepare your slides well. Ensure the headings are clear and the main points are clear. Also, watch out for font type and size, colors, and positioning of information. This is very important for the slides to look aesthetic and clear. Number two, rehearse and keep to the time given. And don't read everything on the slides. Say the essential information only. And number three, and finally, it is very important to know that in a defense, the audience or examiners one answers to these three questions. Number one, why is the study important? The research gap needs to be defended based on past findings. And number two, how familiar are you with the literature and the theory? This will come through as you talk. And number three, how will the study be conducted? Every aspect of the method needs to be thought through and presented. So after this, I will give a demonstration based on my final year students work. My study is on the newspaper portrayal of an infectious disease, rabies. And rabies normally infect dogs, but can also spread to human beings. Thus far, the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health usually use brochures, banners, newspaper articles, and campaigns to educate the public to create public awareness. But what kinds of information are shared with the public? At the moment, we know based on two studies that airport banners usually use facts, whereas posters placed in the hospitals may use pictures and text, and then they may include contradictory information such as a beautiful yellow orchid on breast cancer poster versus rotten lungs on lung cancer posters. At the moment, little is known about how newspaper articles warn the public on disease risk. Newspaper is still an important channel to create awareness among the masses, even in this era of social media. Newspaper articles have a role to play to convince the public on preventive measures to take if they contract rabies or other diseases. And for the newspaper articles to have effect, they need to be persuasive. Much of the research on persuasiveness in public communication so far have focused on political speeches and also advertisements. But there is little research on persuasion in disease risk communication whether it is in newspapers or other means. It is important to study this area because we want to know how newspapers can convince the public to take health action, preventive measures. So the aim of my study is to examine rhetorical appeals in newspaper articles on the rabies disease. And the objectives are to look at the types of information in the news headlines of rabies and also appeals to logos, pathos, and ethos. And finally, I would like to see whether a particular appeal tends to be used with a particular type of information. Let me give you some operational definition of terms. For rhetorical appeal, the definitions are based on Aristotle's rhetoric, which are divided into ethos, logos, and pathos. I will give these definitions in a short while. The newspaper articles in this study refer to only two newspapers and the online version. And rabies is a viral infection that mainly spreads through the bite from an infected animal. Or if the saliva of the animal gets into an open wound, it may affect uh, cats and dogs and could spread to human beings. Types of information is defined in this study as these five types, 
which is based on the health belief model. Perceived susceptibility or risk to the disease, perceived severity or the seriousness of the symptoms, which may result in death, perceived benefits of preventive measures, and perceived barriers to taking those preventive measures, and also to taking a health recommended behavior if uh, the person is already infected or the animal is already infected. Cues to action, what are the stimulus to trigger the health protective actions? So these are the operational definitions for types of information for my objective one. As for persuasive appeals, there are three types. Appeal to logic, logos, appeal to emotion or pathos, and appeal to the credibility of the source or ethos. And these definitions will be used later in the analysis. Let me move on to theoretical significance of the study. At the moment, the use of rhetorical appeals have been studied mostly for advertisements, such as to get donations to save the earth or in political speeches. But it is very much less studied for disease risk communication, apart from the two studies here. And yet this is important to study because we need to understand how communication of disease risk and persuading people to take preventive health measures might be different from persuasion in political speeches and advertisements. Practical significance of the study, the results from this study or this kind of studies will help uh, newspaper writers to know how to use the appropriate or the effective persuasive strategies in educating the public on infectious diseases, not just for rabies. Theoretical framework of this study, there are two. The first one is the health belief model developed by Hoshbaum et al, 1952. This is for predicting um, factors that affect people's health behaviors intention to perform preventive health behaviors. And there are five factors which were already described just now in the operational definition of terms. Later, two more constructs were added to the framework. But in this particular study, I only look at perceived susceptibility, perceived severity, and also cues to action. This is because in a newspaper article, these are the three relevant information that usually appears and are included. Next, the second theoretical framework of this study is taken from Aristotle's three modes of persuasion rhetoric, as explained earlier in the operational definition of terms. Let me now present some of the findings of relevant studies on persuasive appeal particularly using Aristotle's rhetoric. Tama 2013 studied presidential speeches given in France and found that pathos was the most used in the election speeches, but they use it differently together with the use of pronouns I and we. Next, Abdul Rashid conducted this study on Malaysian Facebook uh, persuasion by fitness trainers to get their followers to live a healthy life. He found that the three fitness trainers use logos, pathos, and ethos. All, all three were used, but used them differently. One of them used more logos, another one used more pathos, another one used more logos, but actually all three were present. Next, Emmanuel et al. 2015 examined how websites can persuade the people to give donations to save the flamingo, to uh, warn about dangers of global warming, and also to get people to know what to do in a case of drowning. So they found that pathos makes the experience more immersive and therefore more persuasive. And finally, Tin and Jerome 2017 examined persuasive strategies in airport banners on infectious diseases such as, not such as, that is Zika, hand, foot and mouth disease, Ebola virus disease, and Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus. 
most of the information in the airport banners were facts on the risk of the diseases and the symptoms and recommended actions. But the banners were very careful to make sure that it doesn't create panic and therefore the disease do not appear severe. So with that, we have enough background to know that pathos is a very important persuasive strategy, but so far the health information has relied on uh, logos of facts. But we do not know what is the case with the newspaper articles on rabies disease. So for the method of this study, I use a descriptive research design because I really wanted to know the characteristics of the news articles of rabies in terms of the kinds of information inside and the words used to create public awareness. The texts used were from two online newspapers, the Borneo Post and the Star, and I expect to get at least 50 articles. Selection criteria in the uh, six months period and all the articles that contain the keywords rabies and stray dogs. So the instrument for this study, there are two. First one for objective one is the types of information inside taken from health belief model, but three constructs of the perceived susceptibility, perceived severity, and cues to action. Next one is another instrument analysis framework based on Aristotle's rhetoric for logos, pathos, and ethos. I follow these definitions and examples here when I analyze the newspaper articles later. And these are the data collection procedures. To find the newspaper articles on rabies, I searched the two online newspaper portals using the keywords rabies and stray dogs. If the articles are relevant, I copy and paste them into the Word document and print them up for analysis. This is the search result so far. This is an example of an article on rabies from the Borneo Post. This is an example from the star. Next, the data analysis procedures. For objective one, on the types of information in the news headlines, that is the unit of analysis. I circled the words that are relevant to rabies. And uh, in the preliminary analysis, I found that the relevant words were virus, stray dogs, canine, death, and infection. So I continue to uh, do analysis for the rest. And then later, I copy all these words into a table so that I could see the information at one go. So for column one, I put the news articles one, two, three, four. Column two, I put all the uh, keywords that were related. Then this concept map you see here is something I figured out based on what I have seen. And uh, this is what I will use for presenting the results for objective one. Objective two appeals to logos, pathos, and ethos. On the news article, I use brackets to mark the part of the sentences that show the rhetorical appeal. Sometimes one sentence may contain two. So I mark them and I write logos, pathos, and ethos on the right hand side of the article. And later, I also compile them into a table, column one for text article one, two, three, four, five, and column two, logos, next column, pathos, and next column, ethos. I will put down the number one, two, or three, depending on how many times they appear. So this will help me to tabulate the final results for the objective two. Finally, for objective three, I needed to look at the information on the uh, kinds of information and the rhetorical appeal because I wanted to know if this part is the risk, is it logos or is it pathos or is it ethos? So with that, then I will know which appeal goes with which kind of information. So for this, I do three separate tables. Only the one for susceptibility is shown here. I'm interested in the frequency, which is later used to calculate the percentage to know which appeal is used more for susceptibility or risk messages. And with that, I conclude my presentation. I would say that this study is very important to provide understanding of how the media disseminates information on how serious and harmful a disease is, and also to encourage people to take recommended actions for prevention or to get quick treatment. 
the studies are important to formulate guidelines of effective communication with the media uh, to the public. Thank you very much.